Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale SD45 T-2 locomotive from Athern. This locomotive is decorated in the cotton belt scarlet and gray scheme. This model was lent to me for review by Mark Weens. Since this isn't my model, I won't be fixing any issues in the rip track segment. Otherwise, this will be like any other product review. Athern offers these models in two versions as part of its ready to roll line. As best as I've been able to determine, the MSRP for the next run of DCC Ready SD45 T-2 models will be $169.99. The MSRP for the version with DCC and Soundtrack Sound will be $239.99. Mark bought his DCC Ready unit in November 2019 for $127.48 from Lombard Hobbies. Atherin's prices have gone up in the past couple years, so you could probably expect to spend more than this now. We'll start the engine at 100 possible points. The model comes in a sturdy cardboard box. Inside there's a sheet with exploded view drawings. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. The plastic handrails have foam inserts to keep them from getting bent out of shape. Some Athern tunnel motors for molder production runs had a package of detail parts included, but this model has none. One of the rear grills on Mark's model is detached. This wouldn't be a difficult thing to fix, but a model shouldn't have damage right out of the box, so I'm taking five points. In spite of the loose grill, this is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. Snow sheds and tunnels on Southern Pacific's Donner Pass line required locomotives to operate in confined spaces for extended periods. SP had a long history of using locomotives made specifically for this purpose, going back to the cab forward articulateds of the steam era. EMD's SD45 locomotive with its high mounted radiator grills was designed to reduce its horsepower as a form of self protection when the operating temperature got too high. SP's preference for long, slow freights through snow sheds full of hot exhaust fumes, coupled with the SD45's engineering, reduced the effective pulling power of the locomotives. SP and EMD came up with a new radiator design that drew in cooler air from lower down on the locomotive body. The new tunnel motor locomotives were part of EMD's improved Dash 2 line that debuted in 1972. There were two main versions of the tunnel motor. The SD40T-2 was a 3,000 horsepower locomotive based on the SD40-2. The SD45 T-2 was a 3600 horsepower locomotive based on EMD's SD45-2. The tunnel motor radiator section required a longer frame and a different style of rear step compared to the standard SD45-2. Initially, only Southern Pacific, including subsidiary Cotton Belt, and Denver and Rio Grande Western purchased tunnel motors. SP and Cotton Belt were the only original purchasers of the SD45 T-2. The SD40 T-2 and SD45 T-2 shared the same frame and overall length. The main spotting differences are that the cab is closer to the front coupler on the SD45 T-2, and the SD45 T-2 has three radiator access doors on each side and the back versus two on the SD40 T-2. SP took deliveries of SD45 T-2 locomotives in several orders between July 1972 and June 1975 for a total of 247 units. Mark's model, Cotton Belt 9269, was from an order of 21 units delivered in February 1973. A little over half of SP's SD45 T-2 fleet was rebuilt between 1986 and 1989 in SP's Sacramento shops. SP called these locomotives SD45 T-2Rs. After the Union Pacific merger in 1996, some tunnel motors were repainted and given UP numbers. Many tunnel motors were sold off and put to work on other railroads. I compared Mark's model to photos I found of the real Cotton Belt 9269, and it looks to be a very close match overall to the appearance of the unit as built. A photo from 1985 shows that the unit looked pretty much the same at that time. In 1987, Cotton Belt 9269 was upgraded and emerged from the Sacramento shops as Southern Pacific 6816. It was retired in 1999, rebuilt again, and became Bessemer in Lake Erie 904. Photos show the unit still on the BLE roster in September 2022. The model is a good representation of the unit as it appeared in the 1970s and 80s. The paint on the engine is opaque and thin enough to allow the detail in the shell to show through. The separation lines between the colors are sharp and the writing is crisp. Most of the tiny writing on warning labels and the truss plate is legible with magnification. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic that should stand up to normal handling. The stanchions are mostly straight up and down. The model has Athern's re-engineered rear truck that moves the gear tower forward so that the air intake area is mostly see-through just like on the real units. On my model of SP9207 from an older production run, the gear tower is more visible. In front the engine has freestanding grab irons an uncoupling lever, MU stand, air hoses, and a snowplow. The number boards are not lit. Likewise, the class lights don't even have lenses, just dots of silver paint. The emergency light is not operable. 
It's worth noting that SP's SD45 T-2s only had the full light package in the front. Athern has definitely made some improvements to these models over the years. Compare Mark's unit to my model of SP9207. It has no uncoupling levers or air hoses and the plow is not even close to correct. The cab on Mark's model has photo etched metal sunshades and delicate windshield wipers. The cab side windows are movable on most Athern EMD units, but these are stuck. I'm not sure if this model came that way or if Mark glued them, but either way I'm leaving them alone. The model has wind deflectors and armrests. There is no cab interior. In back, the model has more freestanding grab irons. Details on the rear pilot are similar to the front, minus the snowplow. I was not able to find a good rear shot of Cottonbelt 9269, but some of the other engines in this class had a box beam on the rear pilot. The engine only has the dual beam headlight in the rear, no oscillating lights. Many of SP's SD40T-2s had oscillating lights in the rear as well as the front. On top of the cab, there's a horn casting, bell, vent, and antenna. The turbo exhaust has a see-through grill, though from some angles you can see full-sized wires and electronics through it. The dynamic brake fans have photo-etched grills with nice blade detail underneath. There are no lift rings on top of the long hood, though there are dimples in the lift ring locations. This would make it easier to drill holes to add aftermarket lift rings. The tunnel motor radiator section is nicely done. Undersill detail is minimal. This is an area that could be improved with some aftermarket parts. The trucks do not have brake lines, and there are no sander lines. Since this model comes in at a lower price than some of the higher-end diesels on the market right now, I think the lack of certain details is to be expected. It's important to mention that though the model doesn't have some details, what's there is essentially correct. So if you wanted to bring the engine up to the level of an Atherin Genesis or Scaletrain's rivet counter model, it would be mostly a matter of adding parts. A Canon cab interior kit and some aftermarket air filters and fuel tank plumbing would really dress this model up. All of the wheels pick up current and all the axles are powered. The engine has plastic McHenry couplers on both ends. Looking for a match along the horizontal center line, the front coupler is at the correct height. The rear coupler is a little high, so I'm taking five points. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. The engine wobbles, meaning that the body continues to vibrate after the wheels settle onto the track. This could cause an unwanted shimmy when the model is in motion, so I'm taking five points. The engine weighs 17.3 ounces. Drawbar pull peaked at 3.1 ounces on my force gauge, a little better than average for an HO scale diesel. On DC, all of the front lights come on at the same time. Brightness is dependent on track power. The oscillating light doesn't actually oscillate. Installing a DCC decoder would be the easiest way to achieve better light control. As I mentioned earlier, the emergency light is not lit. The rear light comes on when the model runs in reverse. I'm using my MRC Railpower 1300 DC throttle to test the engine. The model starts and runs smoothly and is pretty quiet. To remove the shell, first I'll remove the screws that hold the draft gear boxes. There are two more screws that secure the shell to the frame. One is near the fuel tank above the front truck. The other is above the rear truck. With the screws removed, the shell will come off. Inside, the model has a 21-pin dummy plug attached to the factory light board. The easiest way to install DCC would be to replace the dummy plug with a 21-pin decoder. There is an area of the frame above the rear truck that appears to be removable. This would be a good speaker location. Let's see what we've got. One of the rear grills was loose, so I took five points in the packaging category. One coupler was at the wrong height and the model wobbled, so I took 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 85 out of 100 possible points, a solid B on our report card. This model gets a green signal. Overall, I think Atherin did a pretty nice job on this model. If you're looking for a tunnel motor for your HO scale layout, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, then please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.